Brooklyn Independent Television. How often have you heard someone say, I'd give my right arm to keep a friend or a family member from serious illness or even death? If only more of us would say, I'd give a kidney or a liver or a heart. There'd be many fewer cases of people waiting, often in vain, for the life-sustaining gift of a healthy organ. Why is there so much resistance to organ donation, particularly within the black community? What is actually involved in the process? Here to answer these and other questions are Dr. Morwar Salifu, Chief of the Renal Division of SUNY Down State Medical Center, and Dr. Devon John, Chief of Transplant Surgery. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. How big is the problem of a waiting list to get an organ? Well, well the, um, the number of patients uh, who have kidney failure every year entering the ESRE program, which is the end stage renal disease program in the United States, is about 80 to 100,000 patients every year. 80 to 100,000 is hard for people to digest. Can you break it down a little bit about what that actually means? How many people die, for example, okay. uh, every day waiting for an organ, for, for example? So let, let me go further. So we have 100,000 patients who are entering the, uh, the, the program for dialysis, uh, particularly, uh, every year. And uh, out of that, 24% of those patients will die in a year, for instance. And the number of patients who are actually entering to become uh, potential candidates for a kidney tra transplant is way, way, way low uh, compared to what we have on the wait list. So every year the number is increasing compared to the ratio of the number of transplants being performed. I think, I think the question more so is yeah. how many people are actually waiting for transplants? Yes. And nationally speaking, more than 110,000 people are waiting for transplants, of which about 87,000 or so around that number are waiting for kidneys alone. So kidney is the greatest demand Right. That's correct. And more, more what about here in Brooklyn? Um, what is the what leads to such great demand for kidney transplant? The um, well, the the issue is is heavy in Brooklyn because uh, I think we have a more diverse population. Uh, there are some specific risk factors for kidney disease, and those risk factors tend to be more prevalent in our geographic area. Diabetes is very common. Hypertension is very common. Some types of uh, kidney disease are more common in uh, African-American populations particularly. So we tend to be disproportionately affected. If you take New York State, for instance, the burden of kidney disease is actually more in Brooklyn uh, and the surrounding areas compared to when you go to upstate New York, for instance. And that is also uh, evidenced by the number of patients on dialysis in Brooklyn alone compared to the number of dialysis on uh, patients on dialysis in the entire New and, York State. Right. The other thing is, is we've already gotten off talking about kidneys, but could you talk a little bit about transplants in a broader, transplantation services in, a, in the broader sense, just what's done at, at Downstate in general. Yeah, Downstate has a very long history of transplantation. It's one of the oldest kidney transplant programs in the world. And one of the best. Don't forget Dr. Kuntz. <laughs> Dr. Samuel, exactly. Dr. Exactly. Dr. <laughs> Samuel Kuntz, who started transplantation at Downstate, was one of the, shall we say, the fathers of transplantation and left a, a, a legacy, legacy to which we both walk in his footsteps. In so doing, uh, Downstate has done more than one, one two, three thousand three hundred 3,300 yeah, transplants, transplants since we started in 1972. So I would like you to talk a little bit broader about other transplantation, just uh, to say what else is available. In terms of availability of solid organ transplantation, transplantation is, uh, can be defined in two forms, in terms of tissue and solid organ. And solid organs, in, ter in terms of transplants, which are being performed on a routine basis within the United States and around the world, which includes heart, lung, liver, kidney, pancreas, and small bowel. In terms of other tissues, you deal with skin, bones, uh, blood vessels, heart valves, uh, corneas, uh, was a great demand for that, uh, are some of the most common ones that are performed. Bone marrow. Bone marrow. And face. Oh, yeah, skin from face <laughs> transplants. Exactly. A new, a new, it's a new burgeoning yeah. field. Two face transplants have been done so far in the United States, uh, and this, the, 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 I think those both patients are doing well. What makes people so resistant to being donors? You, you have about 110,000 people waiting for, kid, for mm -hmm. organs around organs. the country. And nas that's nationally. And nationally, the number of donors we had in, has been pretty much been constant, about between 7,000 to 8,000, or a little bit more than 8,000 each year. 
while the demand for organs continue to rise at a greater right. rate than the amount of supply. And these are from deceased donors, people who've died deceased. and wish to donate their organs or their family. Yeah, wish to that donate has to be clarified up front because the donation from somebody who has died but is willing to donate the organs after death is different from donation when somebody is actually alive and wants to donate to an, a, a loved person. Well, as a result, because of disparity, many people wait many years for an organ transplant. And the complexity or the complications related to that, that many people die waiting for an organ transplant. Yes. And each day about 17 to 20 people die waiting for an organ transplant. And that's a travesty in its own right. Because the technology and the capabilities, both, both uh, medically, surgically, and um, by immunosuppressive medications, the medications that have been developed over the years, have allowed extraordinary successes with transplants. Right. And but when people, yeah. when people, we don't have time to talk about what the, um, the many of the other complications, but one of the reasons that I wanted you to focus on is why people are resistant to saying on their license or someplace, I give my organs for transplantation. Yeah, I'll answer that a little bit, yeah. The, um, this issue was really, really studied in detail by a group called the Min Minority Organ uh, tissue and transplant organ uh, program, MOTAP. That's the abbreviation for the... the, the MOTAP. Group, MOTAP. And what they came up with, very interesting uh, findings. Uh, African Americans in general um, uh, have that kind of reservation towards organ donation for many reasons. Not because they don't really want to do it, but what they found was that some people are concerned because of the mistrust of the medical community. That was a, a you know, I'm glad the, you said the mistrust yeah, because yeah. one of the questions that people ask is, yeah. if I write that I want to be an organ donor right. and I'm in a car accident and I go to the emergency room, exactly. are they going to do less for me because they're just waiting for my organs? It is just a concept. But it let is, me, let me, let me you take it yeah, because yeah. Mm -hmm. as a surgeon, yeah. I have to deal with this more frequently in terms of organ allocation and procurement. Right. But the concept is real to many people. However, it's not real in the practice of medicine. And that is the, the, the emergency room team or the team taking care of someone who has some event, whether it's traumatic or, or, or medical, that brings them to the emergency room or to a hospital. That team that takes care of them is a complete separate and independent team than right. a transplant team. Yes. Only when an individual approaches or becomes defined as brain dead or becomes defined as a potential donor can the organ procurement team or organ transplant team approach. be contacted and approached to assess a potential donor. Sure. And there's a separate independent organization here in New York. There's a New York Organ Donor Network that uh, you can reach through 1-800-GIFT for New York. And that's so doing, by doing that, a team is then sent out to the emergency room or the hospital to assess an individual as a potential So let's donor. put that to yeah. rest yeah. once right. and for all. Right. You right. don't get less treatment if no, you're an organ donor. No, no, no. What no, about no. culturally what happens? Uh, the issue of culture was also studied in the, uh, some of the studies I was mentioning about. And um, what they found was that, uh, at least for within the African American, American community, um, people were very uncomfortable about giving their organs because of the feeling that the organ may go to another race, for instance. Might go to another race. Exactly. That was a major issue in some of the findings. Um, but given yeah, that yeah. the number of people on the right. waiting list right, right. is disproportionately high with, yeah. uh, with people of African descent. That's correct. Yeah. Now, 35% right? yeah. of the people waiting for, or for kidneys are, are black. Exactly. Right. While we represent about 12% of the population. Exactly. So chances are it's going to go to somebody right, that looks exactly. like, like you. But Further, yeah. Furthermore, ahead, yeah. the overall list, about 50% of the list, are people of some minority extraction. So it's far better to donate because more likely someone that looks like you, if you're a minority, will, will be trans exactly. transplanted. Exactly. Now one, thing also, before, yeah. one more right. thing before we, we have some closing words in the few minutes that we have left that time has flown by, I wanted you to say, if people have a question or want to get in touch with the contact, to contact people about being a potential donor, who do they call? When for deceased donation, New York State has a program when you go for your driver's license. So use that driver's license. Use the driver's license. And the point is it becomes part of a registry which is shared amongst the organ procurement agencies in New York State. Okay. So that uh, there's a little heart in your driver's license. I have one in mine. And I'm a donor, a uh, potential donor. <laughs> not yeah, a donor yet. Not right now. Not right now. 
And once you get part of it, it helps. The, f the first thing you have to remember, if you want to be a donor, please let your family know. Okay, so they know very your important. wishes. Exactly. It's very important because ultimately the decision is oftentimes made by your family despite what you may have indicated in your driver's license or any procured or And let card. me just say if there are four children, you have to write it down so they won't be four different opinions. Exactly. Well, that would be preferable. That's right, yeah. to have, have it written down. That's correct. Okay, we are going to have to leave it there even though we have much more to discuss. I thank you both for being here, and um, I hope that out of this conversation, we get some organ donors here in Brooklyn to sign their licenses. And at another time, we need to talk about that would help what it means save somebody to be a else's life and save someone else's life. Exactly. Thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. Follow us on Twitter at BK Independent TV.